We're at Gloucester Keys, just outside Nielsen's Boatyard, and I've got an idea for this picture. I want to convert it to an HDR style image. Now the first thing we need to do is come over to the Layers panel. I'm going to duplicate the background layer. We're going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J, and there it is. We're going to right click anywhere on this area here. And when you right click, you get a flyout menu. We're going to go down to Convert to Smart Object. Once we've got our smart object, we're going to come over to filter. We're going to go down to camera raw filter. So we're taking our JPEG file into camera raw. We're going to go straight to the shadow slider. We're going to move it all the way across to the right hand side. We're going to take it to the plus 100. Next, we're going to come to highlights. We're going to move this across to the left. And as we start to move it over into this area here, you can see the way the histogram is backing up as well. We're going to take this to minus 100. Next, we're going to come to the exposure slider. I'm going to move this back across to the right hand side. And as we start to move it over, I'm going to take it into this sort of area here would be pretty good. OK, let's just take a look at the histogram. I've got a little bit of a gap here in the whites. I've got the warning switched on as well. You can just see that white square around there. So just click on the little warning triangle. There's that white square. What this is going to show us when we click on the whites, when we move this across to the right hand side, we can now move it until we see those little red spots. This is where it's going to be clipped in the highlights. So I'm going to back this up. I'm going to take it into that area would be pretty good. Let's take a look at the blacks. Once again, I've got the warning triangle switched on. So this is going to show us where it's clipped. If I move it into this area here where you've got the blues, that's where it's clipped. Got a little bit of a you know, that pinky color triangle. If I just press Alt or Option, holding Alt or Option down, you can see it's just around this area. It's given us a little bit of a warning, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I am going to take the black slider up though, because as we start to move it across, look what it does to the picture. That looks pretty good, leaving it there. And so what have we got? We've got plus 48. Right, for the next stage, I'd like to bring a little bit more detail out of this sky. To do that, we're going to go to the gradient tool. Now with the gradient tool, I have got uh, minus 90 set there. Let's just reset dehaze. I'm going to double click on that and bring in my gradient tool over into this position. I'm going to press and hold down the shift key, clicking down. We're going to drag it into this area here and that would be pretty good. Just bringing it up a little bit. Let's come to the dehaze slider as we start to move this over going to take it to that area. Not sure I like what it's doing to the top right hand corner. So just backing it up a little bit gives us a bit more definition. It was a really flat gray overcast day and just gives us a little bit more definition in the sky. That will do nicely. However, I'm not sure I like what it's doing to the buildings or to the masts of these boats. So we're going to pick up the brush tool. With the brush tool, make sure you've got it clicked on arrays. I have got a size 5 brush. We've got the feather set on 31. The feather is the distance between that dark circle and that outer dotted line. The flow is 50. Make sure you've also ticked auto mask. Right, we're going to click down. We're going to come around this area of our building. These uh, fantastic old warehouses, which are now nice apartments and offices. And if I come around this area as well, I'm not going to go over the roof. I quite like it darkened down, but I'm just going to go over the, the brickwork like this. So once again, over the brickwork around this area, that looks pretty good. Right, to deal with the mast, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to press Command or Control, pressing and holding down Command or Control. We've now got the zoom tool. I'm going to right click and from the flyout menu, we're going to go to 100%. Now we're going to press the space bar so we get the hand tool. We're going to climb the rigging. Yeah, right. And coming into this area here, I'm going to click down and just bringing it over and just coming down the mast, making sure I get the, the rigging in there as well. It's not the rigging, it's the halyard. He says, you can tell the concentration, can't you? Right, so come over the other side as well. It can be a little bit tricky. It's picking up the, the various tones that we've got in this image. And as I start to come down there, that looks pretty good. And just around the outside, great stuff. Right, coming over, 
Got a very small mast here. I'm just going to use the left hand square bracket to drop the brush down in size. I'm going to take it down to we've now got a size one. I'm going to click down. I'm going to press and hold down shift on the keyboard. So holding down shift on the keyboard, I'm going to release my pen or mouse. We're going to come down to just outside the gradient. I'm now going to click down again. Watch what happens. Down it shoots. How quick and easy is that? Right, let's move across to the other side to the boat here. And so I'm going to use the right hand square bracket to take my brush up in size. We're going to click down. I'm going to press and hold down shift on the keyboard. I'm going to come down to the bottom. I've released my pen or mouse. I'm going to click down again and pow, brilliant stuff. Right, let's come to the bow sprit of this uh, rather nice boat in the background. I've got a feeling this boat here was from Holland. They come from all over the place for restoration work at uh, Nielsen's Boatyard, which is just over on the right hand side. There was a fantastic square rigger in there as well. Just going to use uh, command zero, control zero to go to fit on screen. That's the story so far. Now, the one thing that drew me to this picture was uh, this area here. I just love what the, the highlights and the exposure do to this area. And to bring more detail out of this, we're going to come up, we're going to select the adjustment brush. Now with the adjustment brush, if I just come over to the exposure, we're going to double click to reset that. We're going to go to the dehaze, resetting that, double clicking. We're going to take clarity up to plus 100. I'm going to bring it over to this area here. And if we just take a look down the bottom, I've got a yeah, size 6 brush, feather set to 25, the flow at 50, the density at 100, and auto mask is switched on again, or should I say ticked. Clicking down, you put in a pin. We can now come around this area, and as I come over it, look what it's doing to this area here. It looks absolutely fantastic. Coming over that area, bringing out all the detail over the fenders, over this area, a canvas here as well. Great stuff. Looks really good. In fact, it looks so good, we're going to repeat the process. So I'm going to come up, we're going to click on New, leaving this setting. We're going to click down, in goes pin number two over that area. You can do this as many times as you want. It's just a great way of bringing the detail out as we come over that area, over the area of the canvas, as we've done. Come it round here as well. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush down very slightly. Just going to use the left hand square bracket to go to the end of the boom over here. Just coming down, it's there. Let's go to the end of the boom on this one and there. Right, looks really good. In fact, so good. We're going to do it again. This time, I'm going to take the saturation up as well. I'm going to move it up into round about the well, mid to low uh, 20s there. Bringing your cursor over, that's what caught my eye. That's why I hesitated a bit. As you hold your cursor over it, any of the, yeah, you can see the pink bits, it's showing the mask. That's the bits you've missed. So if you just click down, I can now come over it. Look at the way that the, the settings have just restored themselves. Coming back over to this one, if you click on that, because you missed a little bit up there. Right, I'm just going to come to new because I now need to reset it. Let's go to saturation, taking that into the mid to low 20s would be pretty good. Clicking down one more time, putting in that pin. Try not to get distracted this time as we come around this area over the area of canvas. Going to come down around here just to give those colors there a little bit of a shot as well as we come around here and over. Just take the size of the brush up using the right hand square bracket to do that. So Going to come down the side of the boat into the fenders and just going to come over this area and around that will do nicely. Right, like the way this is looking. If you just click on the mask, you can see the areas you've been over. You can see the areas you've missed as well. Right, reducing the size of the brush down using the left hand square bracket. Just come in around that area and there it is. Great stuff, right? Just checking the other pins, bringing your cursor over them. That will do nicely. However, one thing I don't like about this is this area down here. It uh, doesn't look particularly good, does it? No. Right, let's put in a new pin again. This time I'm going to double click on clarity to reset that. We're going to double click on saturation to reset that. We're going to take the exposure down. Let's go down to uh, minus one. Going to take the size of the brush up using the right hand square bracket. 
we've got auto mask clicked again I'm just going to uncheck the masking so we can see exactly what's happening coming around this area and just down around there that looks far better looks far more natural like that over onto the other side just going to click down coming around here just taking it up to the edge there down around this part just spotted a piece I missed as we come up around that area of our reflection that will do nicely just reducing the size of the brush down to get into this position there that uh, I missed out the first time round. clicking on the mask always a good idea you can just check any little bits and pieces you may have missed out on great stuff that will do nicely right switching the mask off we can now come up to the sliders we can make any adjustments and it's worth trying a little bit of dehaze that's going to just deepen the reflections even further there great that looks really good press Z on the keyboard brings back the zoom tool we're going to come over to effects clicking on effects I'm going to take dehaze into this position here would do nicely what have we got we got plus 23 right let's just take a quick look at effects I'm going to come to the color I've got the zoom tool I'm going to right click the reason for doing this is we're going to pop right into 100% again I just want to take a look I don't think there is but I always look for chromatic aberration you'd find it particularly around the area of the masts the rigging around the area of the rooftops and I can't see any there I tend to leave it ticked anyway right now that we've done that let's come back over to the basic tab I'm going to right click we're going to go to fit in view that looks pretty good let's just take the clarity up into this area let's take vibrance up as well into that position just love the the detail we've got out of the uh, the sail cover areas let's click OK let's take it into Photoshop where we're going to take it just a stage further because next we're going to go to image we're going to come to adjustments we're going to go down to shadow and highlights and when shadow and highlights opens look at the difference this makes to the picture just switching that on and off absolutely fantastic I'm going to come to the highlights because just going to drop it down into this area here we're going to click OK to that but once again I just don't like what it's doing to our reflection so we're going to pick up our brush I'm going to come over to the mask we're going to click on the mask I've got black as the foreground color I've got the opacity at 20 percent I'm going to take that up to 40 by pressing 4 on the keyboard you can of course use the slider if you want to as well but I just find pressing the numerical keys much quicker and easier and if I come around there that looks better like that I'm going to do it one more time just to darken it right down so we've done it over at 40 once it's 40 again so that's uh, yeah 80 didn't need a calculator for that one round this area that looks much better like this and just a little bit more around the that part of our reflection reducing the size of the brush down just to get in the little bits and pieces that we might have missed out on just going to darken this area down here as well so just coming over that just giving this a bit of a polish while I'm at it there that looks pretty good like that there it is there's our finished image you can of course go back into uh, camera Raw if you want to make some adjustments there shadow and highlights you can double click as well always a good idea just take a look at it this is just rendering the smart filter for a second we're now going to get the blending options for the shadow and highlights we can just perhaps just blend it in a little it's entirely up to you but everything with this is completely adjustable just going to take it into that area click in OK and there it is job done using command 0 control 0 to open it to fit on screen I'm going to right click going to put it on a black background going to press tab on the keyboard to remove all the panels and there is our single image HDR style picture go on give it a try until the next time it is happy imaging and take care